for today, I wanted to show you how I actually make the slideshows that we have done in all of our previous lessons. But I want you to remember a couple of things that have already happened in the class. There was the assignment that everyone did in evaluating the CDC ads for flu vaccines. So think about how you are evaluating the visuals for that and the colors and the fonts and the pictures that they used. So that's a form of communication. And then you have an essay assignment about making an argument and looking up sources about universal health care. So you've had some training about dealing with visual content. And of course, we've been doing a lot of things with written content text content. And the upcoming assignment is how to build a PowerPoint slideshow that takes your essay about universal health care and turn it into a slideshow about universal health care. I was giving feedback to another student this morning and I pointed out how terrible it is when I've had to be in a class and the teacher would just read me everything that was already on the slides that I could have read for myself. And all they did was just take sentences out of what they had written, copy them onto a white slide, and that was all we got. I liked it better when the slides were showing me what I should take notes on, so my key terms or statistics or whatever I needed to learn. And then the rest of the time, the teacher was just talking to us and explaining things. So that's the way I want you to think about my process when I make these slides for our programs. And I think this will be a way for you to make good slides for your upcoming assignment. So what you see on the screen is actually my workspace when I was making the slides for today's talk. So you can see it's got the title there and it's got the uh, the grab handles for my name and my affiliation, but see how PowerPoint on the right suggested that I could use a design that had green for a background. Well, green is one of our official school colors at Volusia Online Learning. So I thought, okay, we want the colors to be part of our communication. So if I'm gonna teach from Volusia Online Learning and our school color is green, having a way to work green into my program that psychologically sort of reinforces that we're on the same team. So that's a good idea. So I accepted the suggestion that PowerPoint made. And just like I say about the spell checker in Microsoft Word, it's nice that it makes suggestions, but I have to know more than what it's suggesting because sometimes my answer is no that I have my own idea and I don't want to use their suggestion. But this time it showed me a design that looked pretty good that I think I can work with. So when I selected that, notice it changed my lettering, but it did give me a nice clear green background. And now I can see that that piece of artwork looks like the power switch on a desktop computer. So cool, that means my art element goes with us being an online high school. I don't want anything happening in here that isn't helping to tell my story. So I've got the school colors for my background. I've got a power switch off a computer as my little element that picks up the word power from the title of my program. So already I've got three layers of things going on and I haven't even finished my first slide. But I want you to be thinking like that. Use everything that you have got. Don't waste any space. Don't waste any button that you click on unless it is helping you move towards making an excellent program. But I don't like that font. I don't like that lettering. That's pretty plain. So, of course, I have to tune that up. Up at the top left, you see what I have highlighted. It says I can change the way it capitalizes for it cap so it capitalizes each word. It's not exactly how I want it to finish, and this is what I try to teach you all about proofreading. I wanted the word POWER to be in all capitals, so I did that myself because the program wouldn't know to do that. But another thing it doesn't know 
that the official brand name from PowerPoint has both P's capitalized. And you want to be careful about that with brand names. Like if you look closely at a can of Dr. Pepper, there's no period after the abbreviation for doctor. So anybody that puts a period in there is doing it wrong because Dr. Pepper was using the British way of abbreviating doctor and making that title. So you watch your little details and while you can let the program help you get a lot of the work done, you still have to watch the little bitty details. So now I've changed my sizes and you see I made my title go to the left and it's lined up with that power switch. So power is in all capitals. PowerPoint has its capitalization correct according to the brand name. And then I moved my name over to the right and smaller. A kind of general rule that we use when laying out things like this, like a newspaper story or a magazine story or a title slide is that the author's information ought to be about half the size of the main title for the program. Because yes, I need to say who I am for the record, but it's my topic that is more important than me. And I do the same thing when I go give speeches at teaching conventions that I will make sure my title is strong and that my illustration and my colors, everything reinforces what I'm doing and then I put my name in there at half size because after all, they're going to hear me speak like you are today. They'll see me at the convention. So they get my name. That's something that needs to be there. But the more important thing, what is my subject? What am I teaching? What am I arguing about? And then you see again on the menu, insert picture from this device. So I've got the Volusia Online Learning logo saved on my laptop where I'm making these slides. So now that's lined up with the P and put and PowerPoint. So I use that margin and the bottom of the artwork is on the same level as where it says Volusia Online Learning. So I have a nice neat rectangle that holds all of my elements. Now the way that they gave us the logo on that white background, if my slide was white with green lettering, which might be how I would change it, except this is provided artwork. It wouldn't look so crowded in that box. And that shade of green where it has the Apple logo and says online. It's not exactly the same shade of green, so I might fiddle with the color of the background if I was playing with it. But you get the idea that green's the school color, green is in the logo. We really don't count black and white as colors, but there's a little bit of yellow there for the power switch in the word online. So we got a power switch in our logo and we got a power switch on the main slide. So see, my ideas are all supporting each other. Think about any good sports uniform that you really like. So I don't care if it's the Seminoles or the Gators, but if you think about their uniforms, it's a garnet jersey and gold pants, or it's a blue jersey with orange stripes and an orange helmet. Typically, you don't go past two major colors, black and white or gray. We don't worry about them, but as far as actual rich colors, you don't want to have more than a couple. And we'll see this later on that I'm not going to start bringing in red and blue and other kinds of things just because I have buttons for them. I've got kind of a green theme going on, so I want to try to work with that. And I've got the gold accent color there. So I want to work with that as my trim color. Like if you were putting racing stripes on a car, you want that to be a compatible color. So I saw the point that you made in the chat. Yes, PowerPoint will give you good suggestions and it will help you towards making what I'm going to call the basic decisions of good design. So it will know that if you're working with this color, then it's going to suggest to you that uh, these color lines or this color type would look good on that background. And it does give you some good help but it doesn't always know how you want to finish up. So be prepared to make personal changes if you have a better idea than 
the basic stuff that the program suggests. So I've got my green slide. I've got my title about the proportions I want. I've got a logo. My colors work together. Where do I want to go next? I got to put in the body. I got to put in the details, the content of my speech. And as soon as I added a body slide to go behind that first slide, PowerPoint wanted them to have a black background. So it was designed to be a green and black type design. Well, I don't want a black background. Sometimes white letters on black or black letters on white is too much contrast for people to look at easily. So I know I got to do some work on this slide. I could change the format and see I pulled down the menu that says, do you just want a title? Do you want to have one picture? Do you want to have two pictures next to each other? Do you want to have some type and some pictures? And it will already work out your margins for you if you have an idea of how you want to assemble your pieces. All I want to do is give you some key terms on this slide that we're about to make, and I want to do it on a background that makes it easy to read. So I want to keep it pretty plain, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to format the background. So you see in my pop-up box, the next to last thing, it says format background. Here's where I could change the color of the background. I could have it blend from one color to another so that it might be slightly purple at the top, slightly blue at the bottom, and I'd get kind of a lavender main body in the middle, and you can manipulate that. But one of my favorite things to do is to insert a picture for the background. So I popped over to Google and I'm still thinking about power and power is electricity and lightning is power with electricity. So I told Google, give me a lightning storm at sea. And I started going through the images that were available. And I don't want one that's too busy because that can interfere with the letters. But I do want one that's got kind of a neutral background and gives me room to type. So I looked at that third one on the top row and said, OK, it's got some lightning in it, but the lightning is off to the side and in the distance. And mostly it's kind of a blue, gray, smeary color, kind of an abstract background with the clouds and the water. I think, OK, I can put letters on top of that. So I copied it and saved it and then inserted that to be my new background. Now, depending upon uh, how big a screen you're watching me with, when I filled the background with it, this is not totally sharp. It's a little bit out of focus, so it's kind of soft around the edges. And I like that because if my background is soft and my lettering that's going to be in the front is sharp, then uh, that will let me have kind of a 3D effect so that my letters kind of stand off of the background. So I've got my background and I'm going to put in a title and I'm going to put in a few terms that I want you all to understand. In business school, when I was teaching, I told all of my students who were learning how to give reports and speeches that your visuals needed to have three B's. They needed to be big, bold and bright. So that's the teaching point I want to make for you today, that when you're looking at how you made a slide, or even when I was learning how to be a teacher, my professor told me that was how I needed to write on the board in the front of the room too, because he would sit in the back and he would say, you're not writing big enough on the board when I was making assignments. So going a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger does two things for you. It makes it easy to see, your audience can pick up the information, but it also keeps you from pasting an entire paragraph on the screen in fine print. Because if you're using bigger letters, you put in two or three statistics, two or three words with their definitions, and maybe that's as much as you get on the slide. So you're giving people short bursts of information that they can see, understand, memorize, and, and move on. If, if you do two slides and your whole, uh, all you do is take your Microsoft Word essay, paste it on the two slides, your print's going to be tiny. Nobody can look at that. But if you had five paragraphs, which is what the assignment calls for, that tells me I need five slides. 
because each paragraph ought to have an idea and a couple of details in it. And that would be what I would extract from it and put into my slide. So on this one here, I've put my three terms that I want you to remember, but the template wants it to be those uh, smaller letters. So I'm going to need to manipulate them a little bit. So I make them larger, but it still looks kind of plain and I am not getting some extra psychology in the way that my lettering looks. So I'm going to show you a couple of tricks that are available for this too. In the upper right, you've got a button called Word Art. And see how these different letter samples, they have different outlines, they have shadows, they have a glow, they have a reflection. Some of them are three-dimensional. But notice they're all in kind of a black, white, green, gold color scheme because it has learned from my first slide that these are the tones that are in here. That's why it's not suggesting to me a blue letter or a red letter. So amongst these, I looked them over and I wanted one that had some gold tones in it. But I want to make it extra big. So you see, I've used the scale to make the size of the font as big as I could get it. And I put that in the place for the first term. Now see, it's kind of cheating. The word big is bigger than the other words on the page. So if you know what big means and you see that the word is big, maybe that gives you two ways to remember that concept, not just saying the word, but also making the word look like what it means. So that's a trick that you could consider. Our second word is bold, but that's a thin font. So I looked for other fonts that were available, and you see several of them here in the middle that I found are called ultra bold, which means this is going to be really big, really thick. So I changed the font for that. And see now the word bold is bold. So again, the way the letters look reinforce what the word means. So that's kind of a step forward as a designer. Then the word bright, how can I make that look bright? I could change its color. And since we were doing green and gold earlier, then maybe bright yellow would be a good color for that. So if I thicken it up, or change its color, brighten it up. Now big is big, bold is bold, and bright is a brighter color. So you see how each word is helping you remember these three ideas. Now, if I had said, I want your text to be big, thick, and colorful, that doesn't give you a memory aid. But if I say three Bs, if I had this on a quiz, you would know I got to have three words that start with B. So sometimes I'll manipulate the terms that I want you to learn to give you some kind of memory aid where it spells a word or they all start with the same letter so that there is some gimmick to enhance your ability to memorize it. This is why poems rhyme. This is why they repeat phrases in songs because it makes that easier to memorize, easier to recite. So I've got some samples here and I can see different ways that I can play with my letters. Could I combine these three concepts in the way that I make my wording. What if I made all of them big, bold, and bright? So I have big letters that are bold face and bright color. So now when you see this, boom, 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 here are three ideas, and the way that the words look is a demonstration of what the words ought to be doing. I don't want to have any wasted motion. I don't want to do anything by accident. Nothing should be on my slide except it is like I wanted it to be exactly where I intended to put it. So nothing happens by random. Nothing happens by accident. Even if I use what PowerPoint is suggesting to me, I want to make the decision and say to myself, yes, I like that being there and looking like that. I like that position. I like that shape. I like that color. So you have to really be in charge of everything that you do about it. 
So we have our headline, we have our background, we have our key terms that we want to express, but my subtitle, the beginning of the sentence, if you will, that needs a little adjustment too. So I highlight just the first line because I don't want to mess with the yellow ones. I got them just like I want it, but I want to also dress the lead in line. So I just highlight that part, but I don't want to change the position because it all lines up so well on the left hand side. So I just make that yellow as well so that it clearly says this line is the headline and then the stuff below it is the information that's being transmitted. So the yellow part is doing one thing and the white part is doing something else. Now, here's the hidden trick about this. Now that slide number two has the coloration and the sizes and the alignment that I want, I don't make this slide anymore. I just go to that left hand stack of slides. You see the green one that starts and the one with the lightning storm at sea. I just keep duplicating slide number two. So I just click it, duplicate, click, duplicate. This way, my lettering size and the alignment and the colors and the fonts, it will just repeat. And then I just edit slide three, four, five, however many I make. And if I want to change the background picture, that's easy. But my front stuff will always be in a consistent shape, consistent position. Whether you noticed it or not, I take great care in the previous programs that we've done that when I transfer from slide six to slide seven, I don't want the headline to move. So that even though the words are changing, I want the alignment to stay in place that way you don't feel like the page wiggled on you. What you see that is new is new information, not a new layout. Because I don't want to have two things moving at the same time. I don't want to be changing the visual an awful lot at the same time that I'm changing the information. A lot of times I will actually use two slides so that the transition from one kind of image to another, like if I'm going from text to a map, okay, I know I'm changing the picture format, my lettering is gonna change, maybe I show the map by itself, and then the next slide that talks about it returns to the layout that everybody has gotten used to. Because I'm trying to think how not to startle the reader. Because just because I can flip and dissolve and fade and do all these different tricks, it doesn't mean I've got to do every one of them on every slide. You want to do a couple of basic things and repeat them so that they're not noticing the program. They're just noticing how easy it is to understand what you're trying to put across. So now there's our final slide. The title is a nice big size that cues you in to learn three B's, which is kind of convenient that that rhymes. The subtitle text on the slides needs to be, so I kind of repeat that B sound again. And then one, two, three, big, bold, bright. And those words are big, they are bold, they are bright. So that they are carrying a lot of extra information for me by just sitting there, just in their natural state, which now that you see what it takes to put it together, it wasn't natural at all, but if you have a plan, this just like I want you to outline an essay, you probably ought to make a, a list. I actually doodle little boxes for the slides and figure out, okay, on this slide, I want a picture of this. On this slide, I want a picture of that. This slide, I want a list. Or this slide, I want a quote from the author. So that all I'm doing is executing what I organized. The time that you spend thinking and messing around with pencil and paper before you ever open the program does you a lot of good. I I'll, don't mind telling you yesterday when I had quiet time, I kept thinking about how did I want to show you the process I, I do when I build slides. And so I figured best thing I could do was build the slides but then take a screenshot of everything that I did so you would see all the little menus and highlights and details and handles for making the slides. So all of that stuff that I did in the background, 
now really just gives us two slides. I've got my green one, which is the title to introduce the program. I've got this one, which is my first major piece of information, but I can keep copying this one and just changing the wording or changing the background to keep advancing my information in a consistent way. It, it, it's almost like any other type of work. The, what you put in up front makes the back end so much easier. So if you get your first couple of slides balanced it the way that you want in terms of position and color and font and size and all of that really looks good. Everything looks stable. Everything looks easy to read. Then you just keep duplicating that slide and then edit into your new information. I hope that helps you in making the slideshow assignment a lot easier. Remember, you already wrote the paper. So you already have your five paragraphs. You have your introduction, your conclusion. You've got three paragraphs in the middle where you have some details and information. Make five good slides that basically highlight what was in your paper and you'll be fine. Do not paste your whole paper into 50 slides. Just get your high points, your key quotes, your key statistics and organize them the way you organized your paragraphs and just think each slide is a paragraph and I just want to pick out two or three interesting things. Boom, you'd be you'd be done very quickly. Thanks for your attention on that and I appreciate the comments in the chat. I'm going to turn off the recording feature. And see if we have any questions.